Well, today I'm gonna go out. It's Friday morning. Uh, I thought I'd get out on the water and do the Friday fishing forecast and and do a little bit of exploring and then talk about looking at the side imaging and looking at your sonar and getting a good feel of what you're looking at. Uh, I get this question a lot, so I thought today would be a perfect day for it since uh, Chad's not with me. So I'll go out and scout and take a look at some areas and see if I can find new spots. And if I can, then I'll go through what I'm looking at on my machine and you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at, why I'm looking at it, and how I would set up on it. So I'm gonna run and catch bait really quick, hopefully really quick, and see what happens. folks uh, just to let you know the bait is thick very thick on the flats so you don't necessarily I threw one time and was done on the flats. so the bait the water temperature is at 71 72 on the flats there's bait everywhere so um, you don't have to run to the towers to catch bait so it's it's definitely on the flats and I think it's just gonna get better I mean there's bait everywhere so we're gonna go out now and, and try to locate some new spots and see what we can do all right, folks, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm out in an area where I really haven't looked before. I really haven't taken time to look there. And um, right now I'm not seeing much, but I think I may have just found something. All right, I found this spot and it looks like hard bottom. Uh, it's indicating it on my Simrad and it's indicating it on my side scan and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like but it's got squiggly lines on the side imaging and on the Simrad you can see where it's really tight and you can see the bumps so let me go ahead and show you this as you can see these little wiggly lines here are indicating to me that this is hard bottom so these lines right here are showing me that there's there's hard bottom in this area now on my Simrad, it's showing you how hard it is right here. And you can see some fish down on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try this area. I've never fished here before. It's just a new area that I found. Let's see if we can catch anything. All right, I threw down a couple of baits and nothing. So it's time to move. I will not mark this spot. It looks good, but it just, there was nothing there that they may not be eating but um, there's just nothing seems to be there so we're gonna move on and what a lot of people don't know about what Chad and I do is you don't see it on the film because we just don't show it but we move around a lot I mean we really move around we go between 35 to 55 miles and that's just a day in the bay that's not that's not that's just running around inside the bay so that just goes to show you that we that that we do a lot of running around we I, I don't like to sit in spots too too long especially if I'm not getting hit um, so I just try to jump around as much as we can but you don't see that on camera because we just don't show it and I don't I don't know if I've really talked about it too too much but the key is is to move around I mean especially if you stop at an area and you think oh this looks pretty good and then you end up not getting anything or not even a bite I would I wouldn't even stay I didn't stay there maybe not even five minutes um, it took me longer to cut bait than it did for me to drop down and see if there was anything there um, so I'm just gonna keep looking and see what I can find all right folks I just found another new area it's a nice ledge it's um, it's it's really nice so we're gonna drop down on it and see what we can do but it, as you can see here see that ledge right there it's off to my right I may have to readjust the boat a little bit and see what I can find um, but it is showing fish down on the bottom here so we'll, we'll give it a try and see what happens and just like that there's fish here
what I did is I dropped um, cut bait first a nice little red grouper so that's indicating to me that there's definitely good bottom down there which I could see on my side imaging and on my sonar but nice little way to start like I've said before in the past that it's it's very important that you understand your electronics that you know what you're looking at so you can find these out of the way spots this spot I actually was driving to just to talk to a couple of my buddies in the background and I was driving through and I saw it and so I marked it and I came back and it's actually a ledge it looked like there was a big rock and a ledge so I stopped here and sure enough boom there's a fish let's drop down again and see if we get another fish that's a good indication that's just another spot that I just found you just take a little bit of time don't get over anxious to go out and fish I know it's that's what you want to do you want to go out and catch fish but you also want to take the time to find new areas because it's it's very important to go out and find new spots because you you can move around you can go and and find different spots Ooh, a better fish right here this is a really good fish get them off the bottom got them off the bottom mm. And just like that, you find a new spot. And just like that, it's a nice red group. I'd almost say he'd be close to, to, to a keeper. But you see how hard they fight. Beautiful fish, great indication, showing that just taking a little time to understand your electronics is key. Let's see if we can do it again. Funny thing is, as soon as this bait is getting to the bottom, those fish are on it pretty quick. I'm just using cut thread fins right now that I caught at one of the markers, but then I went, went no, I wanted to check. God. I wanted to check the the bit flats to see if there was fish or bait fish on the flats, and sure enough, there was. So I caught my white bait and pinfish on the flats. But I just wanted to use cut thread fins just to see if I could find some fish, because cut bait is usually really good to use. <laughs> There's a good gag right there. So this is just another. I'm just using the regular jig hook that we sell. Another nice gag. Well, first gag in the morning, but another nice fish. It's amazing how hard these fish fight. And that's why I love fishing for these fish because you just never know what you're gonna get. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this live green back in the top of the head and I'm going to send it down since they're on it so fast I want to see if they're going to eat live bait remember as I always say you want to have as much live bait as you possibly can on the boat uh, shrimp pinfish thread fins white bait so because you, you never know what you're going to get so always see what you can find and and have it, as many different baits on the boat as possible well they don't seem to mind white bait Did they just steal it they just stole it that fast literally it no they didn't steal it they whacked him drop him down one more time see if he gets hit usually when they hit the bait like that they won't come back and eat it but I'll send it down again and see if they'll eat it on. They're beating them up, but they're not taking them. See, the situation we have right now is the wind's coming out of the south. Yep, and the tide is barely moving in. So, they got the bait. I'm going to drop down one more live bait, see what happens. Ah! <laughs> a 
time I just had to bounce it right on the right off the bottom and hit the bottom again and boom he was on it so that's one thing you want to do is if you got like if you got if you're down there and you're not getting bit but you know that there's fish down there bounce it off the bottom really quick create that little puff of sand and it usually will generate a strike that one was on a live bait took a little longer Gag. not bad they're much quicker on the cut bait than they are on the live bait <sighs> big old grunt that I saw that hooked in the head or hooked in the eye caught him looking at it but I all as I always say if you're in the grunts you're in the you're in the right area as we already know because we caught the reds red grouper and gag grouper so what I'm doing is I'm just taking that jig head and putting it right through the head right on the top of the head like that Right at this point, I don't think it's gonna matter what, how you hook the fish because they're eating it no matter what, what way you, you put it down there. So when you've got just one person on the boat, it's a lot tougher simply because you're, you can only use one bait at a time and, and try to figure out what they're eating. But fortunately, right now, oh, that was a good fish. Right now, they're, they're, uh, they're eating everything. So that's good, but when you get out by yourself, sometimes it's a struggle simply because you can only throw down one bait and see what's going on. We're gonna throw down a Mac Daddy. See what he can get. Now, as I said earlier, the bait is on the flats. Um, it was so thick that I threw one time and I had enough bait to fish with no problem i could have filled the bucket and on the second throw and and uh, but i already had thread fin so i wasn't worried about that but the bait is thick on the flats now nervous as i'll get out oh there's a fish i told you, you throw down a mac daddy get a mac daddy You always want to use that power in the rod where the power is right here. So you don't want to come way up, but you want to just short, nice strokes. Another nice red grouper. God bless America. It's another nice fat red grouper. Look at that. Beautiful. Off he goes. So like I said, it's, it's so important to understand your electronics, understand what you're looking at. So before I leave this spot, I'm gonna go by it a couple of different directions to show you exactly what I found. And it will kind of give you an idea of what I'm looking for, how I'm looking for it, and what I, how I set up on the spot. When I first set up on this spot, I knew I was a little bit too far to the left of it. So I used the trolling motor, got myself to the right of it, and then so now the tide's coming in and I can drop down and it's going right into that structure. As you can see, it's like every bait that's down. See, there's what I'm looking at right there. There's that ledge that I was telling you about. You can see the little outline of it there. There it is on the main screen right there. Look at that hump. Now I found a really nice ledge, as you can see right there. Look at that show. Just taking the time to scout is just, is key. Yes, it takes time to find these spots, but once you find them, You'll just have more and more areas to go to. Well, finally.
Finding new spots pays off. That's a really nice snapper. Hit it on a live white bait. Beautiful. It's his lucky day that I'm not keeping fish. I'm just out here scouting and having a good time. But nice mangrove snapper inside the bay. Let's see if we can get another one. That's what I like to do when you see me flip the bale and or when you see me jig it up, flip the bale and let it go back some more. I'm just feeding it down the ledge. Because what will happen is when that tide's moving like this, what will happen is it will pick up that jig with that live bait and it will come up in the water column. And the fish don't like that. They don't like that bait. They want that bait on the bottom. Especially when the tide is moving because they're hugging the bottom. So you got to get it right in front of their face. So case in point, this is what I'll do. Pop it up like this and release the bale. Let it go back. I know I'm on the bottom. Come back. Wait a few seconds. If I don't get bit, I do it again. Can't complain at all about that, especially inside Tampa Bay. Just can't complain about these size snapper. They stopped hitting live bait really quick. So I dropped back some cut bait and sure enough, boom. Not bad. Just like that, I found spot number two. Just taking the time and getting out there. If they're there, I know others are there. It's the key thing is taking the time to find the areas, to utilize your electronics the way they should be utilized. And once you get an understanding of what your electronics are telling you, you'll be able to go out find new spots just like I did today and see results. That's why I do what I do. That's what Chad and I do what we do is because we want to help people go out and catch fish because that's what we all love to do. We don't just go fish to wet a line. We want to catch fish. So hopefully I'm able to help you get an understanding of what we do and how we do it so it could make you possibly a better fisherman. I try to become a better fisherman every time I go out. If I don't learn something new, something seriously wrong. So always go out and try to try to learn something new while you're on the water. Try different things. Don't be afraid. If it works, great. It, you found something new. If it doesn't, you just go on to something else. So everybody has bad days. Trust me, we have them. But if you take what we're trying to give you and put it to use, you will get used to looking at your electronics and finding what you need to find. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the Friday fishing forecast for this weekend because it looks like it's going to be a pretty one. All right, folks, let's talk about the Friday fishing forecast and what we have in store for this weekend. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Sorry, I got to put on my shades because it's a little brighter than, than what I like. So, But it's going to be a beautiful weekend this weekend. And we've got some good tides. We've got a full moon that's in effect this weekend. Chad and I have talked about going back and forth about going uh, night fishing, but I think with the bite being the way it is today, I think we're just going to fish on Saturday. Um, it's been up and down inside the bay at night. Sometimes we come out here at night and we do really well, and other times we don't do well at all. So I'd rather come out during the day and just just enjoy the day. But we are definitely going to do a night fishing trip here in the in the near future. So let's go ahead and talk about the tides for this weekend. On Saturday, we have a low tide at 7.30 a.m. at a negative 0.23, and we have a high tide at 1.47 p.m. at a 1.47, and then we have a low tide at 7.15 at a 0.37. Sunday, we have a low tide at 8.01 a.m. at a negative 0.5. We have a high tide at 2.06 p.m. at a 1.62, and then we have a low tide at 8.04 at a 0.08. So as you'll see, we have some pretty good tides this weekend. 
I think the bite will be really, really good on the majors. Uh, so I would recommend being in your spot when the majors are happening. Let's go ahead and talk about the salooner periods for this weekend. Okay, we have a major feeding time at 11.18 a.m. to 1.18 p.m. And then we have a minor feeding time from 5.44 to 6.44 p.m. And then on Sunday, we have a major feeding time from 12.09 p.m. to 2.09 p.m. And then we have a minor feeding time from 6.55 to 7.55 p.m. Now, the bite was the best for me during the major feeding time, and that was from 10.26 to 12.26. So it really started ramping up during the major feeding time. And right now I'm kind of just going along and, and looking for new areas. So I'm kind of in the middle of the major, but I've got to head back to the office. So I'm going to miss some of the major, but I, I wanted to show, I hope everybody had an opportunity to watch the video before the Friday fishing forecast, because I really wanted to show people what I look for when I'm using my side imaging, when I'm using my sonar, what to look for and how to look for it. But again, this weekend, the weather is supposed to be uh, light winds, Beautiful weather. I heard it's going to be near record temperatures in the 90s, so it's going to be a little bit warm. So make sure you bring things to drink and eat and all that good stuff. But again, we just want to say thank you to everybody for all of the support. It's been awesome. Uh, the, the amount of people coming into the office, buying jigs, cast nets, everything like that. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so if, if you are looking for something and you can't make it to the shop, you can go to tampabayfishingchannel.com and see everything that we've got online there and you can buy it, it's free shipping so you can get it directly shipped to you relatively pretty quickly. So again, thank you very much. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.